This specimen here is one of the most important scientific discoveries made in several decades in Dinosaur National Monument. It is a nearly complete skeleton of a carnivorous dinosaur new to science. It was discovered in 1990 by Dr. George Engelman, who was under contract with Dinosaur National Monument to do a paleontological inventory of the monument's resources. This magnificent specimen was found just as it was starting to be uncovered. As spectacular as the specimen is, the location where it was found was equally horrendous. It was situated 30 feet off the ground at the head wall of a narrow winding canyon and on a sandstone layer that tilted at about 80 degrees. This entire suite of problems presented a very difficult situation for the monument and resulted in one of the most complex recovery episodes that has ever occurred here. Explosives were needed to remove some 30 feet of sandstone overburden and the excavation crew had to create their own work area on this high angle slope. Finally, there was no road leading to the site and it was not possible to take a vehicle across country. So it became necessary to find a helicopter that was capable of lifting a block of sandstone and bone that weighed nearly 7,000 pounds and carry it back here to the visitor center. We were successful in that and in late 1993, early 1994, we began to take the jacket off to get the specimen ready for final preparation. Well, George Eagleman and Tom found this site um, when they were doing the survey. And it's important because uh, it's in the salt wash as opposed to the um, brushy basin where most of the other dinosaurs are found. And it's also a theropod. So theoretically, this is kind of the first theropod that's been found in the salt wash in the Warriors. And it's the original bones that were laying out on the side of the sandstone face were these toe bones that you can see here. Uh, these were slightly disarticulated, but these here are still articulated just as they were in the living animal, and then we could see the ends of one or two of these long bones in the foot. Well, here we've got, this is one toe bone running in like this, this would be the end of it. We've got, this is the second one running in, we've got the end of it that's in the lab now. This is the third toe bone. I'm not sure what the bones of these are. Everything seems to be running in. And then down here, uh, let's see, this bone was exposed at the surface and this end was exposed. But obviously this bone is a long bone running in, and we've already found another, this looks like the end of another long bone running in. So it, it looks like it could be a real productive site, but um, it's a moderately hard sandstone. And again, even to get out these things, we're going to have to really take some overburden off up there. The bedding plane is such that it's dipping to the southeast down in this way. And the good part is it looks like all these bones are definitely running in towards the bedding plane, which means you know, we're hoping that the whole rest of the dinosaur is right down here under this, what, four feet of overburden or so. curling the way most of these things do in their death poses, then we're going to have to take a lot out over here because it's going to come around this direction. So we're going to get down quite a ways. It's going out this way, which would be really ideal. Then all you do is take this down instead of going in there. And uh, depending on how cooperative this rock is here, uh, we ought to hit something going down in this direction pretty soon. Actually, I, I hope that we run into it right in here. If you follow those down along, then they ought to start showing up here. Blast off next spring, and then we can really concentrate on getting this 
That's the scientific method. Okay. <laughs> make, make it be well, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that doesn't look very comparable to Allosaurus, oh, unless yeah. this is not, I mean, this, if this is Allosaurus, but not any previously recognized species. Yeah, well, but, but it, it's, it's... But this it's, business here... Yeah, it's, it's different in too many ways. Yeah. And the, the other clues that will at least spell it out when you do a, a complete, get a good look yeah. at, at that, at both the anterior and posterior margins of the, uh, uh, the other... Blade. I've never seen that kind of scarring there mm -hmm. on Alasaurus, and I've never seen a broad mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. like this, this should come hook right around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and that isn't distorted at all. Yeah. Plus that length. If you, if you did proportions, uh, overall length versus the length of the, the foot, you, you, it wouldn't fit any of them from the yeah. Cleveland Lawyer. Good. So, if one of them is Marchisaurus, and that's what happens to the Cleveland Lloyd, and we have a, a, an articulated, associated skeleton, that's just like someone giving you the, the dictionary. Because you can use it to tell which of these, and then whatever's left over is your other dinosaur. So you automatically have, uh, are able to describe two new dinosaurs in detail. So what would and you... He's, and he and Jim named both Stuxosaurus and Marshosaurus. Yeah. So would you rather this be a, a brand new specimen or a Marshosaurus? Jeez. Yeah, there's well, a good question. Well, for, for Dan's sake, I'd like it to be something new. And at, at the moment, see, it has characters of both of these two that I wish it would be one or the other, 
But for Dan's sake, I hope it's neither. Okay. Well, <laughs> but we'll take, even if it's yeah. one of those already yeah. known, but, this is by far one of the best meaning dinosaurs thought it's time to Oh, yeah, and the compromise is for it to be neither, yeah. but more like one than the other, because you can still use it for comparison. Yeah. Mm. And uh, by a process of uh, logic and elimination, and uh, try and separate the other two. And Dan and I are working on redescribing both of these other dinosaurs. He's, he's got a lot of material out of the, the monument now. So it, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like being given a, a translator or something. Mm -hmm. So how long before you get to the skull? About four okay. feet. <laughs> how many okay. days, days, months, years? <laughs> Years? <laughs> we need to get rid of all this rock before we go in for it, so we're kind of tunneling our way. How many sticks is that?
if that's a trick, trick question. People I think the people, instructions. That are, the people that are down below are going to be guiding the thing. Yeah. And this thing is going to be letting it down, you know, Hopefully. maybe a half an inch at a time. And so I'll, yeah. I, I think yeah. there's going to be plenty of communication. Oh, yeah. There's no sweat. And there'll be two people working to come along. Yeah, two people working to come along. And then yeah. uh, the, the, the decision makers will be down below saying, hey, you dummy, crank it up again, you know. come along attached to a tree up over the top of the outcrop here and then use car jacks to lift the whole frame of the block up to a vertical position and uh, our hope was to slowly in a controlled fashion lower the block down with the sandbags that we're sitting on now. Uh, in fact we underestimated the stretch on the rope that we were using attached to the come along and when the thing went past vertical it came down about 90 miles an hour and miraculously settled perfectly on the sandbags. Quite a shot. <laughs> no damage. No damage. No damage.
dinosaur. It's definitely a dinosaur. Right? A celebration in the air today over Dinosaur National Monument. This is Dan Dennison. I'll take you there. Now, from 9 KUSA in Denver. You're watching KMGH TV, Colorado 7. Finally tonight, scientists are still uncovering clues to the history of this earth. And today, a very big clue was lifted out of the desert at Dinosaur National Monument. A helicopter is the only way researchers could lift this three-ton fossil in Utah. E Channel 2, Utah's news team. 40 million years old, but for us, it's brand new. Scientists believe they've discovered and uncovered a new species of dinosaur. Today, at Dinosaur National Monument near Vernal, researchers are airlifting the fossil to a museum so it can be studied. KTV's Peter Rosen joins us live from Eastern Utah with a story. Sounds prehistoric. Peter? You're watching KSL Television, Channel 5, Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, airlift this morning in Eastern Utah. The chopper plucked a newly discovered three-ton dinosaur fossil from a quarry site in Dinosaur National Monument. Science specialist Ed Yates wouldn't have missed it for the world and brings us this report. Aboard Chopper 5, we watched the giant air crane from Columbia helicopters out of Portland lift the three-ton load from its grave about one-half mile from the visitor center. Okay, easy up. Looks good. Paleontologist Dan Churi says this was the only way to move this fossil. If we weren't helicoptering it out, our only other option would be to break it into blocks big enough that could be carried on backpacks, and that would just be a scientific travesty. The giant chopper handled two separate loads almost like they were tinker toys. In less than two minutes, the chopper crews swung the three-ton fossil package around ravines, lowering it gently in back of the visitor center. Picking up dinosaur bones this way is an oddity, but it's not the first time Columbia crews have airlifted a peculiar load. They remember the giant gorilla model from the movie King Kong Lives. We had to carry this uh, big giant gorilla that uh, was supposed to be a full-size King Kong. It, uh, it weighed about 10,000 pounds. They had to reduce a bit of the weight for us to get it off. On the ground now, bone diggers will methodically remove this plaster cast and rock exposing a first-of-its-kind skeleton. A few pieces like these foot bones for now are the only visible evidence of this new species, a meat-eater, perhaps smaller than this Allosaurus. The skeleton inside this plaster jacket is complete almost from the tail to the neck. Only the head is missing, and paleontologists hope to find that last piece in the same quarry next spring. It is from rocks of an age in the monument where we know very little about the dinosaurs. And on top of all of that, it's a skeleton of one of the rarest kinds of dinosaurs, one of the meat-eating dinosaurs that lived here about 150 million years ago. A Utah raptor discovered near Moab earlier this year helped Steven Spielberg justify his larger fictional velociraptor in the movie Jurassic Park. Now, yet another new meat-eater comes on the scene in Dinosaur National Monument to tea our imagination. At Yates KSL News near Jensen, Utah. When paleontologists first discovered that fossil four years ago, they thought it was an Allosaurus, but it turns out it's not. So for lack of a better name, Dinosaur National Monument has dubbed the fossil not so Allosaurus. <laughs>
Now that this specimen is housed at the visitor center, what is its future? Well, the first step will be to prepare all of the upper surface of the skeleton in high relief. And then that will be molded so that we can cast a duplicate, exact duplicate, of the skeleton as it lay in the ground. Once that's completed, the skeleton will be completely removed from the sandstone. And at that point, scientific study can begin. The bones can be photographed, analyzed, compared with other known carnivorous dinosaurs. And that work will ultimately result in a scientific publication, which will make the information and data of, on this magnificent specimen ava available to paleontological researchers around the world. That takes care of the specimen that we have here. However, the most, maybe the most important part of the skeleton, the skull, is missing. And so a final phase of this project will require returning to the site where this skeleton was collected and doing additional excavation in hope of finding the skull, the one missing piece of the skeleton.